doing Mike here. Just wanted to go over a uh, real quick tie on this zonker pattern that I've posted the last couple of days. <clears throat> it's, a, it's, it's a very simple uh, pattern. All it really is is like a uh, woolly bugger with a um, uh, piece of zonker, rabbit uh, zonker material. It goes across the top and then I'll put some eyes on it. And that, this is a good minnow imitation for smallmouth bass. Uh, probably one of my favorite uh, flies to use other than a white popper. You'll notice that most of the material on the flies that I tie um, are white. I do other colors and, and I use them, but my go-to and uh, primarily most productive fly, uh, whether it be a streamer like this or a popper, is white. <clears throat> Anyway, uh, real quick, let's get to it. Uh, what I use on this particular one, I do them different sizes, anywhere from a size four down to a two aught. Two aught's getting big, but when I do the two aught, there's a reason for it. I've got some, uh, like a, a um, rattler that I'll put in the belly of it, and that causes the, uh, the gap on the hook to get shortened a little bit too much for being able to get a bite on you know when the fish when the fish fish takes the uh, takes the bait <clears throat> or the fly uh, I know a lot of people don't like to consider these bait but a, a bait is a, is a fly anyway um, the, you want as much gap as possible in any fly that you use <clears throat> anyway uh, the hook that I use is a universal uh, predator it's made by partridge uh, it's a very thin very strong very sharp hook a lot of varies there because that's that's what it is. It's it's uh, very on all uh, aspects of this particular hook. I mean, this hook is designed for pike, musky, uh, pickerel, walleye, perch, and bass. I mean, it's um, it's it's an amazing amazing hook. Uh, and then on the uh, the foundation of the hook is I'll use a standard um, uh, household sewing thread. That's just to build up the uh, the you know a uh, body of the uh, for the material to uh, adhere to or bite into um, and then uh, then I'll use this uh, marabou uh, it's just just white marabou and then to encase and kind of uh, encase around the marabou I'll put this um, uh, this oops not the right not the right stuff where to go where to go it's buried I'll put this um, Palmer chenille. It's a large Palmer chenille, uh, like so. And then what I'll do is I'll encase the marabou with that chenille, like so. And then pull the marabou through to get it um, somewhat even out on the edge. That way I've got some flash, and this uh, the chenille will help keep that um, marabou in in check it'll kind of hold it hold it down and marabou gets tore up you know from the fish their teeth and so that'll kind of help with that too not a whole lot marabou's not really the best thing to use but man it's got a lot of good action so that's the tail and then the body is simply this large uh, pearl cactus chenille it's got a it's it's got a lot of uh, material to it, um, and it, it just it just built makes a, a build up for the body, uh, really really good. And then a piece of um, rabbit, just this rabbit strip, and then I, I tie that that in on top of all of it. And then the eyes are just printed eyes. And then to tie everything in on the head, I use a uh, a, a clear UV uh, finish. So let's go ahead and get started on this and run this thread. This is just regular old household thread that I lay the base down <clears throat> and then um, and then you might know it's wrapped around there darn it okay and then I just wrap that around um, if you get some gaps in there like this it's no big deal because when I come back to the front I'm going to be running it back over top of the thread it's already down and then then I can kind of kind of fill in those spots it's not that important it's just laying a base down for all the material to uh, go on the hook 
and all this does is, is it helps prevent the materials from slipping around on the hook. You, you don't want your material, I mean, when, when you tie them in, if you don't have this foundation, this metal, when you tie it in, you can take and spin all the materials you tied, and, and that's no fun. That's not a good, uh, that's not a good, good tie. So it's not, uh, I mean, you don't have to do this with household thread. You can use it with um, your standard uh, fly line. I, this is a flat three aught. That's my probably favorite uh, line to use. Um, it's uh, it, it it is what I uh, use to to finish the uh, the fly out with. And we'll go ahead and run that on there. And like I said, we this um, this crystal chenille. It also helps keep the um, it also helps keep the, uh, the the marabou from coming up. I, I want this to be as straight across the top so that the uh, rabbit strip lays lays nice and flat. So let's go ahead and tie this in. And then as I tie it in, I'll kind of push down so that I get that effect of the uh, of this material laying more flat down here, and it kind of lays lays down below the the hook around the gap uh, a little bit better I, I like it that way um, it just it just makes it a, a better proportioned hook for the material for your um, for your zonker material that you're going to put down on there your rabbit strip so that's that's pretty simple right there now on the rabbit strip um, you have the fibers going towards the back I like to flip it over Take a good pair of scissors and cut a V in the back. And what that does is it helps take that material. Uh, that's from an old cut, so let's go ahead and do that again because it was kind of flat back there. <clears throat> okay. So what that V does is it allows the uh, the material to kind of blend right back into the um, kind of helps it blend right back into into the uh, marabou and that um, crystal chenille. So what I want to do is get the tips these tips right here to kind of not go back as far on this material, but about right in line with it. So it's got a nice arc back in there and it all blends in. So what I got my thread right here. So what I'm wanting to do is find out where the hairs need to be separated, which is about right there. And then I'll grab where it's going to be done. And then I'll load my fingers up a spit, pull that back, take a bodkin and get it even more uh, separated. So I've got, so I'm down to the leather of the of the skin and a good separation in there for the thread to uh, ride on that way when you bring the fibers back over top of that thread it'll be hit it'll hide it really really nicely so let's go ahead and put that on the other thing I'm wanting to do is as I wrap this uh, rabbit on here I, I want to keep that I want to keep that um, that gap as narrow as possible. Um, I don't want to go running the thread back and forth like this because it'll make a wider gap. And then when you go to lay the hair back down on top of it, uh, that ga that gap's going to show up. So you want to you want to make it as as skinny. If you can go on top of each wrap, that's what you want to do. And then uh, that way, when you run everything back. It, it disappears. I mean, it disappears really nicely. Take a look at that right there. See, that, that, that's uh, that's that's the way you want it to look right there. Okay, so we want to wrap, take this, hold everything back here, and then go to the uh, cactus chenille and tie that in. I mean, this 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 fly is really easy to tie. And then. Go ahead and wrap that in. Now this stuff's so, you know, got so much fiber hanging out there, long fiber. Um, you can actually wrap this thing pretty tight, running it to the to the front, 
and you want to and then you can kind of widen widen your gaps as you get to the front and that be, and the reason why I do that is because I'm gonna pull it tight and then come back over top of it and as I go back over top of it I can pull tight and it closes up those gaps that the uh, string makes on on the uh, on the Chanel and that makes for a really nice body because it builds it up what it what it's doing hang on a second what it's doing is it's it's building up a, a almost like a tapered um, body right there get this thing straight up <clears throat> It kind of tapers it. It's a little bit thinner back here and sticker up in the front there. So that's that's all there is to that. And then you go ahead and again, you're you're running the the fibers back, and I'll pull it kind of tight because the tighter I pull it, it's gonna the uh, the skin of the rabbit is gonna push down on that cactus chenille and and ride really nicely. And I don't want to cut I don't want to cut this um, strip until I get a wrap or two in on top of it because I want that I want the fi even though I'm going to cut the fibers off of that piece of skin I want it to I want some skin up up on the on the top there and they're going to be helping it uh, with the profile over the eyes so that there's no big gap on the eyes so we go ahead and run now well, wet your I'll tell you this stuff when move uh, separates really nice when you wet your fingers Go ahead and put a few wraps on there. And then take your scissors, cut it back, and it's really about that easy. Now I'm going to have it tied here and kind of show you where this thing is going to wrap around. You don't have to worry about it being too clean. You're going to have some scragglies in here. I'll show you how to take care of it take care of those in, in a minute um, just build yourself up a nice nice head on there okay there's that, that right there okay then uh, you can do what I kind of, you can do half hitch with finish or however you finish your heads off it doesn't matter because it's going to have a um, it's going to have a, a UV finished head so you're going to hide all this in fact if you wanted to I suppose you could Use that household thread all the way through the uh, through the tie if you want to. So now I've got a few stragglers here. Okay. So what I'm going to want to do is take a regular lighter like this and pull back on the threads. I don't want the burn off like so. And then just hit it a couple of times. Do a little spin there, and that takes care of all that straggly crap. And I might. Uh, Help that profile a little bit, just like that. Okay. And then um, for the eyes, I just use these printed eyes. Stick those on there. I'll use my uh, X-Acto knife. And those, put one on one side. One on the other side. It's just that simple. Kind of move them around here to get them lined up front and back. There. Check them out. Now you've got you've got a little bit of a gap on the top of the head between the eyes and the bottom of the head between the eyes. <clears throat> you don't have to worry about it um, hitting the 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 eye running around because what you're going to want to do is take your UV finish and hit it which wait a minute before we do that I want to keep this profile the best that I can right there but what I do is I have a piece of um, a piece of, of uh, straw that I've I, I cut down and then spin it like that and then I'll use this to hold hold that in place and then as when I have it here I'll run it forward a little bit to give to raise give it raise up there towards that head 
because when I put this UV finish on there it's going to soak back into the material and um, it, if you don't do this it, it, it doesn't give it as nice a profile. So go ahead and run a little bead right on the top there and that's that's what you want to do is just run on the top hit it with your light. This light that I have here is a two battery light and what that does is it gives uh, gives that bulb a lot more power. You got you know more uh, more watts coming off that bulb than with just one one battery. So we got the top there and then flip it around and throw some more on the bottom. And quickly come back to the light and hit it again. And again because of the two battery light I don't really have to leave it on there all that long. And then I'll build a little bit on, on top of the eye. It'll flow over and touch the um, UV finish that we put on the top and bottom. And that'll kind of dome the eye a little bit. And then I'll flip it around and do the same thing on the other side. Just like that. Let it flow and bring my light up and hit it again. You want to keep the keep the lid on your UV finish. And once that's done, you can go ahead and use your bodkin and pull off the plastic and brush it back. And there you go. That is a uh, looks like my wife a little bit. Uh, that is a nicely tied uh, zonker. It's essentially just a uh, woolly bugger with a rabbit strip on top and you put the uh, put the eyes on it. That, that makes a really nice looking fly. Um, hopefully this helped you out. It's again very simple. If you got any questions feel free to shoot them to me. Um, and if you're watching this on YouTube or on the Facebook page or wherever you're watching it, uh, consider subscribing. I got more I'm going to do be doing here uh, in the very near future and uh, hopefully this summer I'm going to be able to get some really good video using all of these flies um, catching some really nice smallmouth. Until the next video this is Mike and catch you later.